Good evening. Let us begin with a prayer. Lord God, you have brought us safely to the hour of evening prayer. Thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us as we gather in your name. Forgive our sins. Speak to our hearts. Dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word. Receive our hymns of thanks and praise. We ask these things of you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forevermore. Amen. We sing our first hymn, number 164. of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I, I acknowledge my transgressions, 
and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done evil in your sight. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And have the Holy Spirit your generous spirit. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given His only begotten Son to die for us. For His sake He forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on His name, He gives power to become the sons of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. 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 Blessed is He whose transgression is forgiven. Is Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Tonight we continue with the conclusion of the Passion History. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances, and many women also were there, standing at a distance, looking on from afar, watching these things. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, or James the Less, and of Joseph, and Salome, the mother of Zebedee's sons. When Jesus was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him, and they had followed from Galilee, ministering to him. And there were many other women who had accompanied him from Galilee and came up with him to Jerusalem. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after these things, when evening had come, because it was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, behold, there came a rich man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews. He was a good and just man who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. He was a prominent council member, but he had not consented to their council indeed. This man took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus that he may take it away. And Pilate marveled that he had already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. And when he found out from the centurion, Pilate gave him permission and commanded the body to be given to Joseph. Then Joseph brought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus down. And Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and wrapped and bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. At this time we sing verse 7 of 151, also printed in the bulletin. <laughs>
crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, Joseph's own new tomb that was hewn out of the rocks in which no one had yet been laid. Therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near, because the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, the mother of Joseph, sitting opposite the grave. They observed the tomb and where and how his body was laid. And Joseph rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and went away. And the women returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember when he was still alive, how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say to the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Here concludes our Passion History. This evening, we take a page out of the Formula of Concord, the epitome, which discusses the Lord's Supper. And that will be our confession of faith. Please rise. We believe, teach, and confess that in the Holy Supper, the body and blood of Christ are truly and essentially present and are truly distributed and received with the bread and wine. We believe, teach, and confess that the words of the testament of Christ are not to be understood otherwise than as they read, according to the letter, so that the bread does not signify the absent body and the wine the absent blood of Christ, but that on account of the sacramental union, the bread and wine are truly the body and blood of Christ. Now, as to the consecration, we believe, teach, and confess that no work of man or recitation of the minister produces this presence of the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Supper, but that this is to be described only and alone to the almighty power of our Lord Jesus Christ. But at the same time, we also believe, teach, and confess unanimously that in the use of the Holy Supper, the words of the institution of Christ should in no way be omitted, but should be publicly recited as it is written, the cup of blessing which we bless. This blessing occurs through the recitation of the words of Christ. May be seated. We'll sing our next hymn, number 159. <clears throat>
Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are again at the most significant, most sacred weekend in our worship life as Christians. Here we are again in spirit in that upper room with Jesus and the Twelve. Here we are at the foot of the cross, and here we are looking into that empty tomb in which the body of Christ cannot be found. This weekend is truly the high point of the church year of our worship life. And tonight, we are his guests. We are the ones being served as they were that night. Everything is prepared for you. Tonight, there is a higher level of intimacy, a higher level of fellowship and greater blessings than just being together with good friends and family. Tonight, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, the friend of sinners, invites us to come and feast with him. It is a banquet that this side of heaven is without compare. The words of invitation that he issues to each and every one of you are familiar words, words that we'll hear twice this evening. The words recorded by Matthew here in verses 26 to 28 of his 26th chapter. Matthew says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Yes, Jesus eagerly desires your presence, and he graciously gives you his own presence, his own gift to you. If we look in Luke's account of the Last Supper, the Holy Spirit adds this one seemingly minor detail, but it's so wonderful. The words of Jesus when he says, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And you have to ask the question, really? Sitting around a table with men who time and time again over the last few years had shown that they understood very little of what was going on and what he was trying to teach them. Were those words eagerly desired, really? You eagerly desire to eat a meal with the men who in a few hours would abandon you in the Garden of Gethsemane. And those words with you, really? <clears throat> Even though just before this account, they were fighting amongst themselves for positions at that table. They were sparring about which one of them would show the most promise, who was the greatest, and who would be the most indispensable in the kingdom of God going forward. This was certainly a motley crew gathered there in that upper room. Yet the words of Jesus still remain despite that. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you. In the kingdom of God, you see, it doesn't matter much who the guests are. What matters is the host. And the host was our Savior, the friend of sinners. He ate with the twelve. He ate with men of little faith who were slow to understand. He ate with tax collectors. Sinners, prostitutes, lepers, every evil occupation and hobby under the face of the sun. And the Lord invited them all. There's immense comfort in those words for us, too, that he eagerly desired to eat with his disciples, weak and sinful men as they were, because we so often see ourselves in them as well. Paul tells us that each person ought to examine themselves before coming up to this supper that we'll be partaking of tonight. But that's painful, isn't it? 
when we look into that mirror of the law, when we see sin and death, we see failure after failure. We see ourselves tripping and falling over these same traps that Satan's laid for us that we've tripped and fallen over thousands of times in our life. And worse than that, we see defiance. The sinful nature rearing its ugly head in our lives. We see ourselves trying to be God and trying to fulfill our own will. But all of this is stumbling. All this is weakness. And this defiance doesn't bring us the control that we want. It certainly doesn't bring us the freedom that we think we want. It brings unrest. It brings despair. It brings judgment. This is what Paul says, a body that is subject to death. And he's right. In the mirror of God's law, we are forced to see so many things about ourselves that only lead to this conclusion that this holy meal is not for any of us. Yet Jesus says, come. Our loving Father could not turn away from this fallen world. He sent his Son, his only Son. And his Son obeyed him and joyfully came. And that quiet setting of the upper room might have seemed like a million miles away from what was about to happen the next day. And yet as surely as time marches on, Good Friday would come and the Son of God would go, just as it is written about him. It was all coming to a head now, God's perfect plan of salvation. It was coming to its end. And not just there at the cross, but this too was a part of that plan, a heavenly meal for sinners like us. It's hard for us to comprehend why Jesus would say to us these three words of truth, take and eat, or take and drink. But he has, and he still does. He desires for you to eat and drink with him and rejoices to see you there. Don't doubt that. This is a meal for sinners, one and all. As with any meal, the host writes and controls the guest list. Are you a sinner who knows all too well of your sins? And who hangs your head in shame? You have a heavy conscience because of it? Well, guess what? You're on the list. Come. The Lord has invited you. And then, when you not only consider the marvelous truth that he wants you to come to this meal, consider what he gives you at this meal. He eagerly desires your presence so that he can graciously give you what he has to offer. Not only what he has to offer, but what he has won for you. They are abundant gifts. They are presents of grace without compare. Here in this meal, your Savior reminds you that your sins are forgiven. Yes, he says, I love you and I forgive you in the pages of his word. But he does it here too. He does it in the waters of baptism. Here we can taste, here we can see that, yes, the Lord is good. We see that he touches other senses besides our ears and our eyes. This bread and wine on your lips brings you your Savior's true body and blood. And this is the blood of the new covenant. The Old Covenant was the law, and it could not save, it could only condemn, it could only kill. But here is the body and blood of Christ, it is the New Covenant, announced by the prophet Jeremiah long ago, when God said, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel, I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. The Old Covenant called for holiness. And if you couldn't even get a little bit of that holiness, 
it was to condemn you to death. The new covenant was established by death, by the death of the Holy One. And through faith in this new covenant, God covers you with the holiness of his Son. This new covenant is not a bargain between you and him, or where God is going to meet you halfway if you decide that you want to do some good. This is God doing for us what we could never begin to do on our own. It is a one-sided covenant. It is God doing everything and then freely giving it all away to those who believe. It is a covenant of grace and a gift beyond any price. And what's more than this, at this meal, Jesus also gives us the gift of unity, where we get that word, communion. We all come here from different walks of life. We're men, we're women, we're young, we're old, we're in different income brackets. We have different ethnic backgrounds. Some are healthy, some are sick, some are joyful, some are sad. <clears throat> but when we come up to that supper of the Lord, we come as equals. We stand next to one another in Christ because it is his family that we are a part of. We all receive the same bread. We all receive the same wine. And we receive the body and blood in, with, and under those elements. And through this meal, God not only binds us to himself all the more closely, but he also binds us to one another. He does this so that we can share that time of grace together in the bond of peace, working together, sharing joys and burdens, praying for and encouraging one another. In short, loving one another. The very thing that Jesus said would let those outside of the family know that we are truly his disciples. And finally, with eyes of faith, we can see and understand all of this in that most holy supper. This gift lifts our eyes above all the noise and racket of this world to see where we're headed, to see our true home. In this meal, we enter into the presence of the eternal King of Kings. How blessed are we to have that opportunity how blessed are we to gather here tonight and be reminded of these things? Because here's what happens every time Jesus, the friend of sinners, says, Take and eat. Take and drink. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <coughs>
Uh, this evening we want to remember the family of Betty Haven and we want to thank the Lord for bringing her safely home to be with him. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the time of grace that you extended to Betty, our sister in Christ, that she had a good long life here in time and now spends it in eternity with you. We thank you for that abundant grace that you gave to her and to all people, reminding us that the resurrection is to come by that resurrection you had on Easter morning, which we are reminded of at this time. For her family and friends, Lord, we pray that you would provide comfort in this time, that they may not be sorrowful over death, but that they may know that the time is coming when we will all be reunited in you. Our Savior Jesus Christ, God provided us with a Passover lamb to save us from eternal death when he sent you into our world and sacrificed you on the cross for our sins. Work true repentance in our hearts, causing us to make sincere confession of our sins and to believe with joyful trust that he has forgiven us for your sake. May your body and blood given and shed for our sins and imparted to us here this evening in bread and wine in that supper which commemorates your death ever nourish our faith, cheer our hearts, and strengthen our will to live godly and upright lives. Precious Redeemer, may your face that once reflected the burden of our sins and the anguish of hell be ever tor turned toward us in love and tenderness. Let no one in this Christian assembly who has known you as a friend and Lord as well as Savior ever betray your love. And may the dear blood once shed for us be for our sins the perfect cleansing power. Hear us to the glory of your name, Holy Redeemer. And hear us also when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We begin our communion liturgy with hymn 307.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who in our place sent your only begotten Son to purchase us back from sin and death by the sacrifice of his body and the shedding of his blood. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, After supper, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. strengthen and preserve you in the true faith of the life of the lasting depart in peace. Amen. Thank you. 
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the remission of all your sins. true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. And may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Amen. <coughs> Please rise. We continue with the singing of the Nook Diminis. <coughs>
also at 7 p.m., the uh, Tenebrae service. And then on Sunday morning, uh, that will be 7 a.m., no Bible class or Sunday school. If you have Easter lilies, you can bring them tomorrow or on Sunday morning, and same with plastic eggs or candy. Uh, most of the men have already signed up for the breakfast, so I think that's taken care of. And then, just got the final details on Betty's victory service here this afternoon. Um, it's going to be over at George Boom on 10th Street. It's going to be 2 p.m. on Monday. So if you'd like to attend that, uh, they're also going to have a live stream of it. I'll put the details on that email, like I said. I just haven't got around to it today. Any other pressing announcements for the evening? Sure. Sounds good. The Lord be with you.